Ever notice how top students just seem to have an edge? They're always acing their exams. They're getting into the best colleges and universities and they're getting offers to the top jobs. Now, of course, there is a genetic component to academic performance, about 50% according to some twin studies, but the other 50%, that's all on you. What are your study habits, techniques, rituals? Of course, everyone says that certain things work better than other things, but what does the evidence say? What do the top performing students actually do? When do they study? Why do they study? How do they study? And with what resources do they study? What makes top students, top students? Well, it's surprisingly simple actually. Smart goals, eliminating distractions, taking advantage of multiple information streams, investing in resources, figuring out the why, time and intensity of studying, and which evidence-based techniques they use. One study looked at medical students and resident surgeons performing laparoscopic surgery and distracted them a little bit by asking them, you know, what's 11 times 14? They compared the time it took for them to complete those procedures to the time it took someone who wasn't being distracted to complete those procedures. Guess what happened? It took them 40% longer to finish the surgery. Inexperienced drivers are nearly eight times as likely to get into a car accident when dialing something on their phone. And being exposed to unrelated audio when trying to memorize a set of numbers can reduce your retention of that set of numbers by up to 50%. A cross-sectional study that just means looking at a bunch of people at the same point of time looked at 675 medical students and their top performing habits or their habits they attribute most to their success. And one of the top things reported was removing distractions. Top students find that hole in the library that you can never really find up seven different sets of stairs and find their place in the corner at a only single seat. And then they put on their noise reducing headphones, create a wall of books, cut the distracting inputs from the outside world. So why do top students do this? Well, as we just learned, cutting these distractions out of your environment will not only help you remember information longer, it may actually help you accomplish more in a shorter period of time. So they might actually need to study less than everyone else. The next thing they do is they use this distraction-free zone to make actionable goals or SMART goals. And SMART goals are an acronym for accomplishing a specific goal within a certain time frame. And there's a couple other little things. S stands for specific, what needs to be done by who in what time frame? So for example, I want to increase my biology grades by 10% by the end of this semester. M is for measurable. Is it quantifiable? How are you gonna measure success? Well, maybe I'll measure my time spent studying. Uh, I'll also measure my performance on quizzes, homework, and tests. Achievable, am I being realistic? Well, maybe if it requires me an extra eight hours a day of studying to improve my grades by 10%, that's not reasonable. What about a 5% increase in grades for an extra hour? of studying every day. Relevant, why are you setting these goals? Well, if I score higher in biology, that'll improve my grade, which will improve my GPA, which will increase my chances of getting into a good medical school of my dreams. And T stands for time bound. How long do you have to complete this goal? By the end of the semester. So overall, it might sound something like this. By the end of the semester, I'll improve my grades by 5% in biology by studying more. The third thing top students always use is multiple streams of information. Warren Buffett owns stocks in over 50 different companies. And if you're so confident in his ability to invest, why not just buy a stock in one company? Well, the answer is diversification. If Apple suddenly went under, Berkshire Hathaway would be hurting a little bit, but they'd have 49 other companies that would support them. Top investors do something called diversifying their portfolio and top students do the exact same thing. They don't only use the lecture slides, the textbook, practice questions, flashcards, or getting taught from tutors or friends. They might use all of these resources. Now they don't spend a significant amount of time on each resource, but they'll get exposed to each resource, take a look at say the textbook, the lecture slides, have a tutor try and teach them, and they'll see which source has the best information and the most easily learnable information. And finally, they'll narrow it down to those two or three resources, never just one, and really focus on them. Number four, top students always spend the money and invest in resources. Ever notice how Man United did really well as a soccer team for many years? Or the Yankees? 
or the Patriots or the F1 team Mercedes were winning years after year after year after year after year. Yes, of course they had great skill, but they also had the big money wants. A family rule passed down to me is to always invest in education. A good education is paramount. What better investment than yourself? This investment is going to return better than any index fund, any real estate inve investment, any Bitcoin, anything. And usually the cost is relatively low as well. Maybe you're buying an online resource or a textbook or some tutoring session. Now, of course, some people have more money than other people. What I'm saying is your priority, that means what you spend your money on, should be your education. Assuming, of course, your health and safety are under control. And if you've really exhausted all resources and you can't afford investing in education, try contacting friends, family members, teachers. You'd be amazed what teachers can do and the resources they can get you if it's for learning. Top students spend this money without even thinking because they know how important it is to invest in themselves. Now let's use these resources to save the world. The people of Japan to this day have one of the longest life expectancies on earth. Of course, there are many contributing factors to this, but one of the reasons is thought that many of them have what's called an ikigai or a reason for being. There is no quitting your ikigai. There is no reason quitting your reason for being. They practice this up until the day they die. Find your reason for being and your power source is infinite. The greatest predictor of success is grit. And that's from Angela Duckworth's book, Grit. And she identifies top performers in science, athletics, and literature, and they all share these common traits. And this isn't being born to a certain family or, you know, growing up in a certain area. It's a personality trait, and she calls it grit, which combines perseverance and passion. The simple ability to adhere to a goal over the long term. And she says the four stages of this are interest, practice, purpose and hope. Simply put, top students are passionate about what they do and they use this passion to work hard for long periods of time. This is the cheat code to life. It's it's doing something hard for a long time that you're passionate about, single focused. It's a cheat code, but no one really types in the code because it's so hard. Anyone trying to be a professional athlete, an astronaut or a Nobel laureate will tell you this is a tough road. Number seven, simply study longer and study better. Students who concentrate harder and study longer perform better than students who don't do that. That makes sense, right? And there's really not much to this tip because it's so straightforward, but we need to hear it, right? Us students need to hear that, listen, sometimes you just have to put in the time, some more than others. And the important thing is, is it's not just the time, it's strategic time. The top students not only spend more time overall studying, but they also spend a higher proportion of that time focused and doing good work. Number eight is tune your instrument. The top students have a tuned up brain. The brain is your most calorie hungry organ in your body, using about 20% of your energy daily. And a damaged instrument won't perform well, like a blunt knife. It's not gonna be able to cut things as good as a sharp knife. Give me six hours to chop down a tree and the first four will be spent sharpening my ax. And one study looked at students with ADHD, depression, and anxiety, and it showed their academic performance was worse. This is unfortunate, but it makes sense, right? If you're using that instrument to do work, to study, and there's something wrong with the instrument, you're not gonna be able to perform as good work as someone who's got a high functioning instrument or a sharp knife. Now what students with ADHD, depression, and anxiety can do is fix that and treat that as best as they can with their healthcare provider or whatever resources they use, because as it comes closer to being at a stable state, their performance will also increase. And top students know this. There are top students with ADHD, depression, and anxiety. And you know what they do? They tune their brain to their best of their abilities, and then they put in the extra work. Top students also know health is paramount because the brain plays such a significant role in our performance, and it's affected by what we do to our body, right? It's affected by our diet, our sleep, and exercise. Top students don't pull all-nighters. I don't know where this all-nighter thing comes from. Top students don't do it. There's evidence that says this, and in my anecdotal experience, I've seen it too. A few facts here. When your sleep drops below seven hours, your performance suffers. Our brains can invent solution to problems as we sleep. People that exercise have better memories and better sleep. Short sleepers who sleep less than six hours a night have lower GPAs than longer sleepers who sleep greater than seven hours a night. We're getting close to the end here. Number nine, 
use laser cannons instead of nerf darts. If you've ever watched Star Wars, please tell me you've watched Star Wars. You've noticed that Jedi's like destroy the troopers and the regular soldiers. Cause I mean, they have freaking lightsabers and they just have those little laser guns. Top students know that in order to stand a chance in the competitive academic environment, they need laser cannons and not nerf darts. And these laser cannons aren't secret techniques that the top academic performance are hiding away in a basement. These are well-known techniques that are proven by evidence. And these are simply using active recall, and that could be practice questions or flashcards. The nerf darts are highlighting, rereading, summarizing, re-listening, all of the passive learning stuff. Top students use laser cannons in the form of active recall, and lower performing students use passive recall or the nerf guns. Please don't sue me, nerf. They can't sue me. I said nothing bad about the nerf darts, just... And finally, from the Philadelphian close to my heart, early to bed, early to rise, makes man healthy, wealthy, and wise. One study looked at 410 students and separated their academic performance into average GPA of 3.7 out of 5 or less, or excellent, with 3.75 out of 5 or greater GPA. On average, the excellent group had an earlier bedtime and an increased total sleep time. One other small interesting finding that I saw in this study is that subjectively, the independent predictors of success from these students were feeling like they obtained sufficient sleep and not smoking. Smoking's bad. Here's another quote from a paper that looked at 170 college students. Compared to those with the lowest academic performance, students with the highest performance had significantly earlier bedtimes and earlier wake times. Napping also tended to be more common among high performers. Now, of course, listen to your circadian rhythm, right? But you can probably move it a little bit earlier and simply the association between their performance and the early wake time is compelling. In my Zach theory on the cause of this association is two parts. The first part being that there's something called sleep inertia, which means until about two to four hours after you wake up, your cortisol and kind of your brain arousal levels aren't at their peak. Cortisol levels don't peak till 30 to 45 minutes after you wake up and your brain arousal doesn't peak till around two to four hours. And the second point is academics are organized in America at least to have early exams. Usually exams are first thing in the morning. So if you got an exam at 8 a.m., the late risers might roll out of bed at 7.30 and rush to their test. Their brain isn't peak cognitive function until 10 when they're halfway through or finished the test. The other thing is maybe they went to bed at 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. the night before because that's when they normally go to bed. But the problem is they haven't met those seven hours of sleep that we all need, that the evidence shows for our brain to be functioning at top, top level. Fortunately or unfortunately, academia is just biased towards early risers. But that is it. That is what the evidence shows are the top 10 habits of top performing students. I'm gonna go try and find some laser cannons, I guess. Do they even sell laser cannons here? Awesome. Okay.